let's take a look at a forklift that uses LPG fuel. LPG is drawn into the carburetor where it's mixed with air and evenly distributed to each engine cylinder. Because the air to fuel mix ratio can be higher than with gasoline, the exhaust gas is cleaner. For the same reason, there's less oil deterioration. One additional benefit of LPG is an extremely high octane number compared to gasoline. Thus, the possibility of engine knocking is greatly reduced. On the other hand, there are a few disadvantages of LPG, such as higher temperature requirements for the vaporization process compared to gasoline, difficulty starting when the ambient temperature falls below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and because LPG is stored under high pressure, it requires special handling compared to gasoline or diesel. To begin, let's look at the path the LPG takes to reach the engine. The liquid LPG that flows from the tank enters the filter which is located inside the regulator. The liquid drops in pressure and expands to a gas in the regulator. As the LPG vaporizes, it absorbs heat. Therefore, the engine coolant is routed through the regulator to maintain a constant temperature. The low pressure LPG is drawn into the engine through the carburetor at near atmospheric pressure. To an LPG filter, which is housed in the regulator inlet. The filter element is made of porous fiber and can trap insoluble particles 10 microns or larger. A solenoid valve integrated within the regulator is located between the filter element and the primary pressure reduction chamber. The engine rev switch, which is a small integrated circuit, senses a signal from the igniter located in the distributor, similar to a tack signal. When that signal is present, the engine rev switch recognizes the engine is cranking or running. The engine rev switch then completes the ground for the LPG relay coil. With the LPG relay coil energized, the contacts in the LPG relay close completing the ground circuit for the LPG solenoid, allowing it to open, and the LPG then flows into the regulator. The engine stops when the ignition tack signal is not sent to the engine rev switch. The LPG relay opens the ground circuit for the solenoid, and the valve closes. We'll first look at turning liquid LPG into gas. Upon entering the regulator inlet chamber, LPG pushes the elastic face valve open and enters the primary chamber, where the pressure drops and vaporization begins. LPG is converted into gas, and its pressure is reduced as it moves from the primary chamber to the secondary chamber, where it approaches atmospheric pressure. At idle, the slow path chamber provides LPG to the carburetor, air with the LPG, and works to introduce this mixture to the engine. In addition, the carburetor has a built-in slow port to provide smooth engine operation at idle. An LPG carburetor has a built-in power valve operated by vacuum from the intake manifold, which supplies additional fuel when the engine is under a heavy load with regulator operation during engine startup. When the engine begins to crank, the solenoid valve opens and LPG, which enters the regulator from the filter, flows into the primary chamber. As LPG enters the primary chamber, it expands, dropping in pressure to become a vapor. When this pressure reaches 3.6 to 5.0 PSI, the first diaphragm presses on the first regulator spring and the first valve lever is closed by the first diaphragm hook. As a result, the elastic face valve is closed and a steady pressure is maintained. When the engine is cranking, manifold vacuum is applied to the slow path diaphragm, opening the slow path valve. This allows LPG to flow to the carburetor at 3.6 to 5.0 PSI. Next, let's look at the carburetor. Without pressing on the accelerator pedal, Let's start the engine. LPG flows to the carburetor through the regulator's slow outlet port and then flows from the Venturi nozzle to the slow port, which allows the LPG to bypass the throttle valve. At idle, the carburetor Venturi vacuum level is extremely low and the elastic face valve that connects the primary chamber and the secondary chamber in the regulator is closed. During idling, 
LPG is supplied to the engine from the slow path circuit. The volume of LPG that flows is adjusted by the idle adjust screw. PG that flows from the regulator slow path passes through the venturi in the carburetor, through the slow port, and is supplied to the engine. At idle, the throttle valve is closed. The volume of air and fuel entering the engine is controlled by the air adjust screw in the carburetor accelerator pedal. The throttle valve opens. Vacuum is created in the carburetor venturi, which acts on the secondary chamber through the main path. This vacuum pulls the second diaphragm to open the elastic face valve. LPG flows from the primary chamber to the secondary chamber, and then to the venturi in the carburetor through the main path. When the engine load increases, vacuum in the intake manifold is reduced. This allows the spring to push the power diaphragm, opening the power valve, resulting in additional fuel flow. In other words, the engine load is monitored through the intake manifold's vacuum, and the power valve is opened and closed accordingly. Through this function, fuel is appear when the ignition is switched off and the engine stops, electric current is shut off to the solenoid valve, which allows the valve to close. This stops the supply of LPG at the regulator. As to the repair, disassembly and adjustment of the new Eisen filter regulator, once again, refer to your video workbook or the LPG repair manual. Remember, careless disassembly may cause diaphragm and valve contact defects. And when checking the second valve lever height, check contact with the lever when passing through the A side of the SST and the absence of contact when passing through the B side. If this cannot be satisfied, then use these SSTs to bend the lever for adjustment. Even in a properly operating system, tar may accumulate in the secondary chamber. If so, diaphragm sensitivity may be reduced, causing the fuel path to be blocked. Tar removal should be carried out after the engine is stopped, but while it is still warm. After removing the tar, reinstall the service bolt and ensure it is securely tightened. As mentioned earlier, LPG will become a gas in the atmosphere and sink to the lower areas because it is approximately twice as heavy as air. Because gaseous LPG expands to about 250 times greater than liquid LPG, large amounts of gas atomize even if the liquid leak is very small. Ensure the tank valve is closed firmly when the tank is not on the fork truck. Also, always use a flashlight when conducting inspections in dark areas, and never, under any circumstances, use lighters, matches, or any other open flames. The preferred method to check for leaks is to use a soap solution. Special attention needs to be paid to the fuel line connections, tank outlet, and the regulator inlet. If leaks occur, it is imperative that repairs be carried out immediately. In addition, be aware of potential short circuits to batteries, power cables, or other electrical circuits. Internal fuel tank pressure rises along with a rise in ambient temperature. Both LPG tanks and forklifts with mounted LPG tanks should be stored in a cool place with good ventilation and always kept out of direct.